Hey everyone, Zero here, and I've noticed a trend recently on the tube of you with some of my favorite creators going back and revisiting old projects, recreating them to show off new skills and techniques, and I thought, hey, I want in. Betty, you online? Online, and ready. Bring up the Arbor Day file. Accessing 2021 records. Now this dice tower originally was a cool idea because I got to make it live on stream, introduce folks to foam clay, and show them that you can make a badass dice tower even if you don't have access to a 3D printer or woodworking supplies. But I could have pushed the design further, and frankly speaking, the paint job is boring. So I'm going to take another crack at it right now. To begin with, I've got this rough sketch of the interior build and the overall aesthetic I'm going for, and I've got my pile of supplies. Am I actually going to use all of these? No, but don't tell my bank account that. And now, here for your enjoyment, some sanding ASMR. Once this cheap hexagon tray from Michaels has been sanded down, I trace its outline onto some medium weight chipboard and then sketch out the perimeter for where I think my tree will be. Then when that's done, I just cut it all out. Once I'm happy with how everything looks and the final placement, now it's time to build the interior dice tower portion of the build. And for that, I'm gonna need some XPS foam. Since the interior of my dice tower is going to be a tube, I take those bricks of XPS foam and put them on my circle cutting jig from Shifting Lands. I just cut around the perimeter, move the hot wire in about half an inch to three quarters of an inch, and cut out the center. Now I'm holding onto these plugs because I can slice them up for the ramps inside the dice tower, and each ramp will match the diameter of that particular section. From there, I'll take my hot wire tool and freehand cut each one of the tube sections. This is going to allow me to glue things back together at odd angles. And with all the cutting done, it's time for a proper gluing montage. Gluing montage. Okay, it's not supposed to be that kind of montage. And why are you zooming in on the Sure Bonder logo? I use it, but I'm not sponsored. Not sponsored. Uh, are you just going to repeat everything I say? Say. Okay, I'm feeling very, very uncomfortable with this. And Super creepy. All right, cut. I get all the pieces glued back into this gnarly curling shape that will form the foundation for the tree, glue in a few of the ramps to give the dice a nice tumble, and now it's time for a test drop. That's quality product placement. And let's see how it works. Beautiful. Time for the next step. Now my previous dice tower only had two LED bulbs for the lighting, but I want to step it up with this rig of LED strips. Let's just use a little special effects here. Boom. This is going to run on 12 volts and be able to plug directly into the wall. Let's get it installed. To diffuse the lights and give them a nice green fell glow, I took this piece of packaging plastic, sanded it down, and added a layer of UV resin tinted with acrylic green ink. Then I just set that under my lamp to cure. Since I want to minimize the amount of foam clay I'm going to have to use and therefore the amount of drying time, I'm going ahead and building an armature out of crumpled strips of aluminum foil. This will allow me to go ahead and give some shape to the tree and I'm thinking for a swirling, gnarly, decaying sort of look. At this point, I go ahead and take the time to tack down my light rig with some hot glue and I make sure that the wire for the plug is wrapped around the back of the tree. Once everything has been shaped and hot glued down, this is our final result. It's looking pretty good, so I feel pretty confident moving on to the foam clay. They said size doesn't matter. They lied. This is foam clay, and it's a fantastic material to work with. It's air dry, and once it dries, it's the same consistency as EVA foam, making it beautiful for cosplay, terrain pieces like this, etc. Very easy to work with, very easy to sculpt before and after drying, and bonus, it's going to make this dice tower super light. Working it onto my armature is a snap. I just use water and my finger to make sure that it's pushed soundly onto the aluminum foil, getting it into the texture, and then any fingerprints I leave behind or lumps where I need to smooth out edges, I just want my finger and go to town. Then I take one of my sculpting tools and start very carefully putting in the texture. I'm just going for random lines and an overall bark texture that I can always make deeper once it dries. And now it's just lather, rinse, repeat for the rest of the tree. So let's get a metal montage in here. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay, that's enough of that. Before the clay fully dries, I'm gonna go ahead and take this opportunity to cut out all the various areas that I want the light to shine through. The effect I'm going for overall is that there's two distinct eyes and then all these pockets that seem to be melted into the tree where this radiant, ghastly, ghostly evil is kind of spilling out of. Once I am satisfied with all my hole placements, please don't turn that into a dirty joke. We're done. The carving's done. We just have a quick test of the lights to make sure they are still working. And now, well, you guessed it. Hey, you like this bit? It gives us a chuckle here at Artificer Industries whenever it's used. And now you can chuckle at the confused faces of everyone around you when you wear it in public. That's right. We decided to cash in on our creative bankruptcy and make it available for sale in our shop. It's live now as shirts and a bunch of other items because nothing says capitalism like running a meme into the ground and milking it for all it's worth. Link in the description below. May God forgive me. Back to the video. To make this Dice Towers paint job pop more than the previous one, I'm going with a theme, and that theme is Swamp. So I'm going to start with this very sickly green base coat, and instead of adding other layers of paint, I'm going to switch right over to acrylic inks. For instance, this brown ink, which acts as a tint and a wash to get in all the details, and I follow that up with a nice, rich, dark green ink. This is going to accentuate the shadows, it goes on very, very easily, and it can be spread out and blended with a dry brush. And speaking of dry brush, it's that time again to bust out one of my cheap makeup brushes, load it up with some pale paint, knock off the majority of it, and then just go to town on this piece. Again, I'm just looking to grab the most raised edges of the details, and I'm painting in the direction that the light would be hitting this. This paler, sort of greenish gray color that I'm using is to make the tree look a little bit more old and weathered and still a bit dry, even though it's in a very, very humid environment. And add in a final pass of bright green OSL around the eyes to make it look like it's glowing even when the lights are off and our paint job is done. And while I put the final touches on this build with some simple flocking, allow me to take this moment to shout out my Patreon supporters, including my two newest supporters of Dyson Minis and Deneen Dolphin. If you would like to support these videos and these builds, consider joining my Patreon. Everything I do here is 100% Patreon funded, so thank you all so much for allowing me to do what I love and allowing me to share my geekery with you. The final step to completing the look of our haunted tree dice tower is for some hanging moss, and I'll do that with this pull apart moss doused in watered down Mod Podge and just layered onto the tree. After that, I just gotta let it dry, and that's it. Now there's nothing left but to show you some beauty shots and tell you a little bit of story. In the swamp west of town, there's a tree the locals say is the gateway to the land of the dead beckoning travelers, be they alive or ghost. If you're lucky or unlucky, you might see its fell glow oozing out through the mists. It's not the tree you have to worry about. It's not the spirits, neither. It's the fact that the longer you look at it, the more the lights feel like home.